In this episode, I'm going to break down a ton of sporks as we battle them out for what would be best on your next outdoor adventure. Well, that's right, folks. I'm really pumped today for this video because I've had a lot of time and a lot of meals with a lot of cooking utensils. And I've been testing out several over years and some over the last few months to give you a good rundown of what's on the market and what's best suited for you when you are looking at an uh, eating utensil to take into the backcountry, camping, ha hiking, backpacking, all those type of things, or just around town and you just take your you know meals with you to the office or to the job site and you just want a lightweight tool to be able to eat your meals with. We're going to break down a bunch of different brands today and show you the positives and negatives of each one to help you make that wise choice. So let's go ahead and get to know the contestants today and see which one will be best suited for your eating needs. All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and get to know the contestants that we are looking at here today. We have lots of different companies, brands, options. Um, all of them are some form of polymer, except for the Gerber Devour over here, which is um, uh, aluminum. Now, the only reason I'm throwing it in there is because I've currently and recently reviewed it, and some of you may be curious how it compares to these other ones. So we will touch on that briefly here in a moment. But let's go ahead and jump into really one of the first sporks for camping and backpacking and you know carrying in the outdoors, which was the Light My Fire uh, spork here. Dishwasher safe, made in Sweden. Uh, you could easily get for you know three to four dollars. Uh, and what I have done over the years is I've used a lot of them. Uh, but as you can see there, one of my opinion's greatest downfalls of these is that they are pretty um, fragile. You can easily snap and break tongs, uh, and they are short. At under seven inches long, uh, they do not have quite the real estate for a lot of eating tasks, particularly when you're in the backcountry and you're eating dehydrated meals or eating out of different types of containers and cups and bowls. Uh, there's not a lot of real estate there. Yes, they're cheap. Yes, they're lightweight, but uh, have never really been my first choice when I've been looking at sporks and outdoor uh, utensils in the past. And I keep this one around just more for perspective because I did break that tine, uh, just kind of doing whatever. I can't even remember what I was eating, but I was out, hot, you know, camping one day and just ping and it was stuck in my food and I almost swallowed it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm done with these. Now, right next to that this year, uh, Yuko brand has come out with their own version of a polymer spork. Uh, you can get it individually for about the same price, two to three dollars, uh, and they come also on their mess kits that we'll be doing a video, either have done it or will do it um, uh, coming soon. So uh, the thing that I like about the Yuko more than the Light My Fire is that the um, edge is a little thinner for the cutting uh, than on the Light My Fire. It it has a tendency to almost nick your mouth though. It's almost too sharp uh, on the serrated side. The tines are a little bit better designed in my opinion and it's a more natural, whereas this one has this weird kind of curvature, uh, it's a more natural design and a little bit more, in my opinion, useful. So if you are gonna go with a lightweight polymer spork, you want a spork and you don't mind the length of about seven inches, it is slightly longer um, than the um, Light My Fire version. It's about seven inches long, gonna weigh about uh, half an ounce, uh, then I would go with, if, you, if you're dedicated to do that, that's the one I would go to over the Light My Fire. Now, there is a brand that started out, I think they did a Kickstarter, this uh, morsel that we have over here. That's this big guy right here. And this is a, a polymer designed uh, uh, oversized, extra large spork that's uh, just over 10 inches in length and will come in still at under an ounce. Now, what I really liked about it and why I, why I purchased it is A, the length. At 10 inches, that gives you plenty of real estate for your dehydrated meals uh, to be able to eat out of the bag without having to cut the tops off and then you lose the Ziploc bags and or the Ziploc feature and you know it just gets messy and just it, it's not fun. So when I'm backpacking and camping and I know that dehydrated meals are going to be part of the adventure, which they usually are when I'm doing that or hiking for the day, uh, then I prefer something that has a, a length that's longer than seven inches. I need more like eight to nine inches minimum on my uh, material. 
and on my my utensil, excuse me. And so what what made me gravitate to this is that it is a very dense polymer. So it's I would say probably the best polymer of the batch of all the polymer tools you're seeing here. It has the best blend of flexibility but strengths. Um, and you will see that slightly in the weight. It is one of the heavier items here, uh, but also the fact of just that length. So um, the the those are all the positives. The drawbacks are one the price. It's one of the more expensive items on the. Um, floor in front of us here and it's going to run about 10 to 12 dollars on average for this and the spoon portion though great kind of like as a spatula it's contoured in a certain way uh, has rubberized sides even kind of reminds me you know of a lot of my kitchenware the bowl is not that set up for like soups uh, or like chilies and those type of things. It's almost more of a flat spatula than it is an actual like bowl that you would see out of a lot of other spoons. So that's the only real kind of drawback that I see in the spork world that we're looking at. But of a dedicated actual spork, I would say that this one it would be the one that I would take with me the most. Now they do have a smaller version uh, that is about seven inches long. That's the exact same material and design and everything's just a little bit smaller. The only other drawback also is real estate. At about 10 inches, you have a lot of real estate there. So it may not fit conducively in maybe mess kits or in your backpack in a way that you've been storing your other utensils. Then you have to give it a little bit more uh, real estate in your bag that you may be carrying out into the backcountry. And guys, I do just want to take a brief time out. We will have links in the description below over to Amazon, Blade HQ, as well as backcountry.com. All of those will often will have most of these cooking and eating utensils uh, available. And we just appreciate when you guys use those hyperlinks because I have bought all of these to test out and review and show you guys and just helps us continue to make the content that you see here. And I also don't want you to forget about Knock Around Sunglass Company. We got, they got sunglasses for the entire family and that's just another simple way to help support the channel and help me to continue to make content just like this. So links all below if there's one utensil in particular that stands out to you that you'd like to pick up. Now I'll move here to the only non-polymer one for a moment with this Gerber Devour. Uh, again, if you want more details, you can watch the whole video. But uh, this will be the most expensive at about $15. It does have this little tool that is disconnectable. You can remove it uh, back here you know, with a, a bottle cap opener, a little serrated edge so you could cut packaging if you needed to, uh, as well as a can opener so that's a nice little feature there if you forgot your can opener or you lost it you know whatever uh, and then it does have that aluminum body with some tines and a good bowl there and, and a nice edge that you could cut any of your white meats so you can cut fish and chicken uh, rather easily with the side of the um uh, spoon here and, and it has enough thinness there to be able to do that well. It, it is just over seven inches, I believe. It's like 7.2 inches, something like that. You can see it's a little bit longer than these other sporks here. Um, giving it good reach for your average cooking tasks and all that. Uh, it's tough, it's durable, it's a, a, arguably possibly a little bit stronger than the polymers, less likely for like the tongs to snap or something like that. The tongs, the tines to snap uh, on that. Granted, it is again the most expensive and it still not, doesn't give me the reach that I'm looking for when I am backpacking, camping, and hiking. And I think that I'm going to be eating dehydrated meals. And it's kind of a must for me. You keep me harping on that because that is one of the main meals that I eat. If if I go hiking for the day and I know that I need a full meal, or if we're gonna do backpacking, if I'm doing car camping, not that big a deal. If I'm just you know, using it as a general uh, uh, utensil that I'm gonna carry with me to the office or something, not a big deal, seven inches is fine. But for outdoor use, I like the longer real estate because it gives me uh, just a better grip on the, the item with those dehydrated meals. So uh, there are positives to the design, but I think there are some definite drawbacks because it's not long enough. If they made an extra large version, I think it would have a lot going for it. Um, but that is something just to consider is that it's not quite long enough for those dehydrated meals, but it does have a lot of features that are, that are unique and do help it stand out from the crowd of these polymer based ones. Now, next up, uh, a, a lot of you guys have actually recommended this to me and I gotta tell you, I'm not impressed, uh, sadly, is this K-Bar Tactical Spork right here. Now this guy's gonna run you, it's kind of like the middle of the road, it's about six to $7, kind of depends on when you get, where you get it. Um, but uh, a very dense polymer, which I really like, it's gonna come in, I believe at just about an ounce. It is one of the shorter of them all, this guy, is uh, just under se ju just about seven, just about seven inches long um, in that design. Uh, the cool thing is not only do you get your little spork 
front right here but it will pop out and give you a serrated steak knife as well. And, you know, obviously has that kind of classic K-bar look on the handles. So initially all that, it's like, yeah, that's kind of a cool concept, cool idea. The two issues that I mainly have are this. First off, when it's in this format, and let's say you're eating a salad, you're eating, uh, you know, some sort of eggs, or you're going in, in more liquid forms, uh, let's say chili or soup, this bowl here is too deep for my taste. It, it's way deeper than most of these other bowls that you're going to see and it's narrower than most of these other bowls just to kind of give you perspective there you know it's a smaller setup and so what ends up happening is that you have you always have little leftover food in here with every single bite and you're kind of like digging your lip your upper lip into the bowl trying to scoop out the stuff into your mouth and then the tines are kind of wide and short and stubby so that they'll, they'll hold food, but it's a little tricky with any sort of vegetables or fruit to really stab well because of how wide this outer mouth portion is. So honestly, the, the bowl doesn't work as well with with soup and uh, uh, more liquid form stuff, and the tines don't really work as well as some of the other stuff we're seeing here because of how short and stubby they are. And with the way that the, they've designed this, there's areas for this little guy to get, collect all kinds of little food particles that are really tricky to clean, particularly if you're in the backcountry. There's this little gap hole right here that you can still see has some food particles. There's some food particles in this little notch that they have right here. I don't know why that's there. Hopefully you guys can see all this. And then all these ribs, you know, if you get food in there, it's kind of, uh, it, it's going to take you more time to clean. So it's not fun to clean this, particularly when you're not near a sink with a brush, which if you're outdoors, it's not going to happen. So it's not a fun utensil to clean. And then finally, when you do pop this out, the cool aspect is that this is the best serrated like knife on any spork I've ever seen. I mean, they, they really did the knife well. It will tear through any type of meat packaging. It, that, that blade is really well done the issue is that now my tool is like three and a quarter inches each so it's very small in the hand you're going to get your hands nasty messy and it just isn't conducive or organic to me in any way that i try to look at it or use it so the idea i really like and the blade is really well executed but i think the the everything else that we're talking about it just doesn't make sense to me it would not be a choice that i would go with for most of my outdoor adventures unless i knew that i needed a really really good knife and like basically we're doing a cookout steak time that would really be the only time that i might consider taking that with me so for a long time, uh, I've been, when I go backpacking for the last couple of trips, I've been doing a dedicated utensil set. Uh, this is a GSI set. I think I paid like $4, $5 for it. Polymer, obviously, uh, you know, you get your dedicated fork, spoon, and knife. So that is that is the most organic for what you would have like at your home, you know, uh, in that way. This will have the best spoon out of all of these sporks and things that we're looking at. Very wide, very deep, very well done. You're going to get a lot with each bite, which is great. The fork, you know, is very natural. It's not like a spoon fork like some of these guys over here. It's not um, as short as these two guys in here uh, and is very competitive to like the morsel. So that's really nice. And then obviously you got your steak knife that works well, not as well as the K bar, but it does do a good job. We'll cut, you know, all your, your utensils or all your um, food. The, the downside are twofold. One, you have to spend more money to get something to tie these together. You know, I mean, you could just use like a little twist tie, but usually, you know, you're going to want to look for something, maybe a night gear tie, a little carabiner or something like that. Uh, and if that dis gets disconnected, you could lose one of your utensils. So there is positive and negative that. Obviously, you could lose any of these. Um, but also the fact that they're still not the full length. Now, they're longer than some of these guys over here. Give us a little perspective there. So we got almost an extra inch over those sporks that we're looking at over there. So, you know, they're about like almost eight inches long. So that's good and is definitely more conducive to eating out of dehydrated meals. And again, you do have like your dedicated item which are positives to that but again you do have this three-piece setup versus something that's more conducive that connects together that's a little bit smaller footprint overall and a little bit lighter in weight this will be uh, one of the heavier setups because you have three tools and then or three utensils and then you got something trying to keep them all together so there are positives to that in price and in functionality but there are also drawbacks to some of these those aspects as well so to wrap it all up, guys, if you were to ask me of all of these that you see here, which one am I going to take on my next backpacking trip that we're doing here in about a month? Easy. 
it's going to be this Yuko switch. So this is kind of the quote unquote upgraded version over their spork in that it's a two piece system dishwasher safe again under an ounce glass reinforced nylon but uh, what you do is you pop these two guys apart now we have our two dedicated spork or sorry excuse me fork and spoon which is great but we also get a serrated knife on the back end there that i have used extensively in multiple ways uh, for regardless of it's eating salads eating uh, eggs, steak, tested out the knife on steak, worked great, zero complaints there. So very, very functional in its overall design. Uh, but what makes it stand out from any of these other ones is not only do I get the full functionality of an actual serrated knife, I get the full spoon, I get the full uh, tines on the fork, but this little guy transforms into your 10 inch spork for the dehydrated meals. So not only do I have the full functionality of a cook set when I, when I don't need a dehydrated meal with the knife and everything else. But when I'm eating out of a dehydrated meal, I have the reach of the morsel at about 10 inches. It's very tight, secure, works really well. No complaints there whatsoever. Dishwasher safe. Walmart has them for about $5, five to $7 on Amazon. Uh, and, and again, and under an ounce. So all of those things coming together for me personally, guys, uh, I go with the Yuko switch. That's what I'm planning on taking. You guys will see some shots. We'll probably do a couple, like a minute update, you know, when we're out there camping and backpacking um, with you. But I've had a lot of uh, use with this, not only on day hikes, but also testing it in all kinds of environments here at the home on all types of different foods and really seeing good results. And I'm very happy with the system, regardless if I just take it to the office for the day or if I am out in the back country enjoying a dehydrated meal and everything in between. So that really, I believe, is like the best of all the worlds put together because it's compact, it's lightweight, it gives me a dedicated knife, a dedicated spoon and fork, and it's not going to break the bank at around five to seven dollars. All of those and coming in under an ounce win for me. But guys, I want to know from you, what do you feel is your go-to? Uh, has this video changed your mind? Has this given you good ideas? Is there something that I'm missing? Is there another utensil that somebody makes that you're like, bro, those are all great, but you got to check this one out before you, you know, uh, go out there because I want to hear from you. What is your feeling on this setup? Maybe the dedicated system is, is the better for you. Maybe you're like, dude, you're high as a kite. I love the K-Bar uh, or anything in between. So really looking forward to that, guys, and hearing from you. Thank you so much for coming over here today. I just hope that this video has been informative and entertaining, but also giving you data points to just help you when you're out there so you're not irritated with your eating situation, that you're enjoying your meals and not irritated with the utensil that you decide to go with. So uh, thank you so much. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media, throwing up stuff there all the time. Subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Become part of the GT family, throwing up videos like this every single week. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.